Hope you all are having an amazing day. I just wanted to pop in with a tutorial on how I create my eye-catching thumbnails. This video is going to be fairly quick, and so if you are interested, please grab a pen and a notepad to join me for the rest of this experience. Step one, capturing that photo. You definitely want to capture a photo that overall summarizes what your content is going to be about. For example, in this tutorial, I'll be creating a thumbnail for a hair tutorial video that I recently recorded. I am making sure I capture an angle of the finished product, that way I can capture the attention of my potential viewers. In other words, if you are doing a cooking tutorial, be sure to snap a photo of you during the process of cooking and then the finished meal. If you are doing a face care routine, be sure to snap a photo, a close-up photo of your face and maybe the products you are using. If you have a before and after picture of the results that the product has brought you, that would be great to include in your thumbnail. The goal here for step one is simple. Capture a photo that will draw potential viewers' attention by any means necessary. If you don't have a camera, that's fine. Use your phone. Here's actual footage of by any means necessary. My camera does not autofocus because it's a fairly old camera, but let me tell you, that does not discourage me. I simply get my broomstick that's about four foot feet long, tie a cloth to the end of it with a rubber band, and I get it how I live with the manual focus, you know, like we're not stopping, we're keeping it moving. Step two, choosing that photo. As mentioned in step one, you want to be sure that you're capturing a photo that overall summarizes what your content is going to be about. You can have really good content, but if your thumbnail is not luring, no one is going to click on your video. I don't know if any of you all are like this, but I take a gazillion pictures just so I have enough options to choose from. For organization, I create a folder containing my favorite selections. That way when it's time for editing, I don't have to get dizzy resorting through the photos. Step three, editing. My main goal while editing is to make sure that specific details are highlighted. For example, in this thumbnail, I'm going to be making sure that I sharpen my Bantu knot, which is the hairstyle that is shown in this thumbnail. I'm going to make sure that I highlight my eyes, my lips, my um, edges, just certain details that I know will make the photo pop. Next, I am going to be smoothing out my skin to get rid of any visible blemishes. While I was recording this video, I was dealing with my monthly hormonal acne. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so I'm just editing so I can get a clearer appearance. Not that I hate my skin or my body. I love my body in any state that it's in. Obviously, when they watch my video, they'll be able to see my flaws and details. It's just about luring your potential viewers in. I don't know why the world is set up in a way where some people are more drawn to perfection. It is what it is. We're just trying to get our content clicked on, okay? <laughs> Do y'all see this comparison of the before and after of my hair? That's the main goal here, to make the main objective pop out. Bring out those details. It makes a huge difference. And now for the final step. Step four. Four is my favorite number, y'all. <laughs> styling and titling your image. This is very important. I am using pickmonkey.com to create my thumbnail. I've been using pickmonkey for years, like back in the day when they used to be free, before all the upgrades, before they were as big as they are now. It's been a pleasure watching this small company continue to grow. But yes, 
um, they used to be free then they went up to $7.99 a month and now I think the most basic subscription is $12.99 I believe I'm paying but in my opinion it's worth it they're constantly reinventing themselves applying new upgrades um, and updates so this is like my go-to for sure as of right now I don't have a specific direction of what I want this thumbnail to look like but I usually start off by playing with the background by either removing it completely, erasing it partially, and just going with the flow from there. I like all of my thumbnails to look similar just so my channel maintains a unique thumbnail style, which is really important because you allow your subscribers the opportunity to form an attachment with your content's style. I know style consistency is often a detail that is overlooked, but trust me, it is very important. Think of your favorite TV show. If one day they just up and change the intro song, I guarantee it would feel a little bit strange to you because you've already formed a connection with the original song. Style consistency acts as your signature, which is why it's important, in my opinion, for all of your thumbnails and all of your content just to have its own unique style that separates you from the rest of your peers. For the titling, aka the wording on your thumbnail, you want to be sure that it includes details that are not listed in your title. Using the cooking example once again, if you are doing a cooking tutorial using non-GMO products and you have not written that in your title, your thumbnail would be your perfect opportunity to write that detail. The photo of your finished entree may look delicious, but may have automatically discouraged a potential viewer from clicking because of their assumption that you made it with GMO ingredients. This is why it is important to include unique details in your thumbnails titling. It is as equally important as the photos being used in your thumbnails, your video's title. It basically gives your viewers an in-depth feeling as to what your video is going to be about and may potentially answer questions that may have discouraged them from clicking on your video. And that just about wraps up this tutorial. Before I close out this video, I do want to mention that I realized I did not go into intricate details in regard to what filters and editing tools I used on Facetune and that I did not capture the entire process of my editing on PicMonkey. So if you all would like for me to upload a tutorial surrounding the, my detail editing process, please be sure to comment that down below in my description box and I'll be happy to upload that tutorial. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so, so much for your continuous support. If you are a new viewer here, I'd like to first start off by saying thanks for stopping by and please consider subscribing to my YouTube space to be sure to catch my future uploads. Sending you all lots of positive energy. To those of you who watch this video for a little bit or watch this video in full, thank you so much for your patience and your support. It is genuinely appreciated. If you learned something new, please give this video a thumbs up. Until next time.